Welcome to Behind the Action, where we take you behind the action of independent and mainstream action entertainment. Today, we're going to take you behind the action of the Urban Action Showcase and Expo 2019 with my special guests, UASE team members, Beautiful Diz, and La Chocolate Box. I'm your host, Demetrius Angelo, and I'll see you behind the action. Welcome to Behind the Action. I'm Demetrius Angelo, and joining me today is my, or I should say, my lovely guest, um, Miss Beautiful Diz, which is a, an extraordinary cosplay artist, uh, social media, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, what influencer. Do you call <laughs> influencer. Yeah, I'm influenced. Social media <laughs> influencer as well. Um, incredibly talented individual and then we have I should say I'm gonna claim her as my own uh, she's been with us from the beginning uh, she's our red carpet host she's she's everything I need her to be but she's also a talented <laughs> actress um, seamstress um, I don't know anything she doesn't do miss La Chocolate Box Hello, guys. spoken word <laughs> Uh, entertainment, she does it all. Um, today we're going to talk about Urban Action Showcase 2019. We're just going to give you a little recap. Uh, we pretty much made some history. Uh, we started out Friday, November the 8th uh, at our HBO Cinemax uh, red carpet Indeed. Um, uh, reception at AMC Theaters in Times Square. Yes. And um, Rochelle's going to give us a little bit of the rundown on the red carpet. Uh, we had uh, filmmakers, over, over 80 filmmakers, 13 different countries from around the world. And um, La Chocolate Box gets to pretty much interact with everybody. She mainly handles the, 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 the big wigs, all the celebrities. But if there's something to be seen on a red carpet, she'll see it much better than I would. Oh my goodness, this year was insane. It was insane. And I have to admit, there were several moments where I got teary-eyed. That's kind of what I'm known for, people. I really don't know why, I'm just saying. But it was so crazy. And you know, much like many of the guests say, and say throughout the years, is that it's kind of like a big family reunion. There's lots of hugs, kisses, everyone knows each other. This year, I had the opportunity to interview back to back um, Ron Van Cleef and as well Michael Jai White, both before and after the mantle of the dragon was passed, which I know you're going to speak about, you know, coming up in a few moments. But it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I, I can't I can't let this go further without mentioning um, Oso Tiari Cassell, Bobby Samuels. That's my dude, Bobby. I, I know you're out there watching, but um, he got a little emotional as well on the red carpet. And that was beautiful to see a man, you know, just kind of let it, you know, lay it all out on the carpet because of something that he saw. You know, these were mentors to him as well. So it was it was insane. It was insane. And I did also interview many of the filmmakers as well. Sorry. Well, it, so. <laughs> it was a historical night. It was crazy. But, um, a few of, of your your celebrity guests. We had uh, Celia Ao, yes. which was Yin Ying from Wu Assassins. Yep, uh, true. Our Cinemax series, uh, Warrior, which was uh, something that Bruce Lee wrote over 50 years ago yep. that we, uh, I should say Justin Lin, uh, along with uh, the uh, one of the producers of Banshee, okay. got together and, and created the um, TV series but uh, we had um, Father June True. Uh, there with us, uh, Perry Young. Um, we had the Warriors in the oh, house because yeah. it was the 40th anniversary of oh, the Warriors. Oh, yeah. So we had David Harris, which oh, is Coach East. He is such a character. We had. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a character. We oh, had my goodness. Dorsey Wright, which was Cleon. Right, right. We had one of the uh, riffs. Guy Stevens. Okay. And True we indeed. had one of the um, Lizzie's. Yes. She was amazing. Yes. She was a yes. I did have the opportunity to interview her as well. So Absolutely. you're right about that. 
Um, so it was definitely a lot of people uh, in the house uh, that night, but it, it was it was an amazing and it was a historical event. It was and historical. We might as well just go right into it. Uh, the mantle of the black dragon. Why is that important? Well, number one, there's only a few dragons when it comes to the martial arts and martial right. arts entertainment. Obviously, we start with Bruce Lee. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee, the little yep. dragon. But Bruce Lee was the dragon because he was born in the year of the dragon. So obviously that stuck, but that's right. who he was. Exactly. Um, but Bruce Lee, according to Grandmaster Ron Van Cleef, labeled Ron Van Cleef the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon. And then a few years later, he went on to do a few films with the title The Black Dragon. Uh, Way of the Black Dragon. Right. Um, and I believe the Return of the Black Dragon as well. Then... Um, we had Jim the Dragon Kelly. After Enter the Dragon, uh, he did uh, Black Bell Jones, okay. Black Samurai, um, Hot Potato, a few different movies he did. Now, obviously Bruce Lee passed, and of course Jim Kelly passed. So, realizing that all of our dragon figures, even Cynthia Rothrock, Lady Dragon. Right. Uh, Don the Dragon Wilson, yes. he got his title as a world champion kickboxer and went on to do several videos, uh, excuse me, I should say, films in the 90s uh, when they had the big uh, video uh, boom back in the day. Remember Blockbuster right. and all that? Right, right. So um, he's Don the Dragon Wilson. And then obviously 1985, Barry Gordy, Motown meets martial arts. I, the last, the last dragon. dragon, right, 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 right. <laughs> now, but the thing is, we haven't had a dragon to represent the martial arts since I basically the 80s, right? True indeed. So what I did was I called up Grandmaster Ron Van Cleef and I spoke to him and I said, hey, what do you think about uh, passing on the mantle so that we'll have a representation as a dragon in martial arts films okay. uh, today. And he was like, oh man, that's an amazing idea. Love it. Let's do it. So I called up some of the grandmasters. And when I tell you, I had about 20 of them there. 20. Wow. I had every living dragon. Every one of them. Every living dragon. Every one of them. 20 grandmasters. Indeed. Uh, and we had some of the, the, the we, we call them the Council of the Masters. So this was both legit in entertainment as well as in the martial arts. And everybody was unanimous uh, in the fact that Michael Jai White should receive the mantle of the Black Dragon. So, you know, obviously many months of planning. So let's start with the way it opened. Oh my goodness. It was an incredible ceremony. I gotta say that watching that ceremony, which Demetrius is gonna explain in a second, I was sitting there like I had this, I was filled with joy and I was teary-eyed because I saw women, women doing their thing. It was amazing. I filmed the entire thing for my cell phone she's, because She's talking about Kobo International Oh my God, they were group, amazing. Take they were amazing. Drum group, uh, Kobo International Takeo Drum Group. All female yes. Takeo drummers. Yes. And Dizzy, they, you see they, that? They were tight. No, you didn't I think see I saw that? them. Oh Did goodness. they have an uh, exhibit? We have it on, on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. You can okay. watch it. Everybody, okay. you guys can watch the entire, oh my goodness. The entire presentation on YouTube. Um, we'll, we'll put the link up for you guys to see it. But all female. And the thing is, they mix traditional with modern. Right. And they mixed in martial arts. Yes, they did. It was an incredible performance. It was performance. incredible. Everybody was on their feet after that. They were on their feet. Because they, they didn't expect it. No. And, it was amazing. Um, so that's how we, we opened up the ceremony. Then I had also Tyrae Cassell, which is a grand, also means grandmaster. Um, he opened it up. Um, Representing, obviously, he was a sponsor this year. Uh, he, he runs Elite Security Systems, 
Um, he actually uh, got behind to, to help me this year make this happen along with HBO Cinemax and Warner Brothers. Um, so he got up there and represented uh, the Council of, of Masters and opened it up with the dialogue followed by uh, Lady Sensei. Oh. And that's the first time we had a female representation in, in the master um, realm, I should say. Um, because, you know, it's very important, you know, that, you know, martial arts is about being a better reflection of yourself. Of yourself, Whether exactly. Whether you be male, female, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. So she spoke eloquently, of course. Beautifully. Obviously, Cynthia Rothrock, Lady Dragon. Yes. Um, so down to earth. Absolutely. Tamak, the last yes. dragon, spoke. Um, Don, the dragon, Wilson spoke. <laughs> also, <laughs> quite hilarious. He, he is something else. <laughs> His story dude. is something else. He's a funny dude. And then, uh, last but not least, Ron Van Cleef spoke and passed on the mantle. And before that happened, all these grandmasters came up and signed two certificates. One, they were both 19 by 27, but one was landscape and one was a uh, portrait. But they signed, you know, on the line as this, hey, w we support you, we support this. And what's, what's, what made this so um, unique is that we as a people have never passed on our heritage or our mantle before because all these people are still living. Right. You're all right. All these people are still living. You're right. Mm -hmm. And the ones are not, they, they didn't, obviously didn't have the opportunity. And this is the first time a people said, this is our selection. Because once again, it's always been someone else labeling us. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to mention that, that that's what made this so beautiful is that we, this urban community of action film stars living, were the ones who decided. We didn't wait for someone to pass away 20, 30 years after they're gone to make that decision exactly. the way they want it. It was done the way it was supposed to be done. One person I can't forget, Fred the Hammer Williamson, Absolutely. a pioneer in the action genre, a pioneer in filmmaking, hundreds of films, all genres, from sci-fi to western right. to action. Right. He's done it all. He was the only per he was the, the, per the only person in those days, we're talking about in the 60s, early 70s, having their contract, number one, can't die. Can number die. two, always wins his fights. And, and number three gets the girl if always. he wants her. If he wants her. If he does. So, you know, he stood up in support of Mike and represented Hollywood for us, you know, the, the, the old regime. And that's important to have a foundation, you know, and you know it's legit. So, it's true. you know, obviously Michael was just overwhelmed with, with joy and, and adulation for this honor and you have to see it i'm telling you take some time watch it on youtube from beginning to end and you're going to be watching history in the making it was just an amazing amazing event it was it yeah. really was so what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys a little little taste um a quick 50 second uh trailer of the mantle of the black dragon and we'll be back with behind the action right after this Welcome back to Behind the Action. 
I hope you enjoyed that little snippet of uh, the Black Dragon Mantle Ceremony. And like I said, check it out on YouTube. Now, to put some icing on the cake, mm -hmm. after all of that, we, of course, we had the uh, International Action Film Festival Awards. Right. Right? Gave out uh, over 100 trophies. Okay. Several different categories, over 30 different categories. Uh, we have categories specific to women called Angels of Action. We have categories that are specific to low budget films. Why? Because the action genre is the most expensive genre to make. So right. we give everybody an opportunity. So we have a category called Blood, Sweat and Bones for all categories. So for instance, for Two Minute Warning, for uh, features, for shorts, for web series, for new media. Okay. Um, so we basically cover everybody and give everybody an opportunity not only to be uh, screened, but to, to be honored for their hard work. Now to put icing on the cake, it was the 10th anniversary of my main man, Black Dynamite. <laughs> Black Dynamite. Starring Michael J. White. Absolutely. Obviously, like I said, he was there for the, the Mantle of the Black Dragon uh, ceremony. And it was a themed throwback 70s party. Oh, goodness. In honor of the 10th anniversary of Black oh, Dynamite. Oh, goodness. So, as you can see here on the screen, Michael Jai Wei came as Black Dynamite. He showed up <laughs> and, and showed, showed out. out. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay. And, and his wife obviously joined us. Yes. And I'm telling you, it was a stone cold blast, as my boy Don Cornelius Absolutely. would say. Absolutely. Everybody came dressed in their 70s attire. Absolute 70s and best. I'm telling you, it was like reminiscent of my youth. Okay. Up and down. Don't See, start. <laughs> now you're my, telling your youth. age. Okay. Of okay. my youth. Okay. Oh, oh, don't get my robot going. <laughs> but anyway, it was great. It was it was an amazing it was an amazing event, and I'm hoping to keep that going. Okay. Because I feel like, you know, we need um, outlets. Right. For right. our like our generation right. ain't dead. Everything about ain't about the millennials. No. <laughs> Everything no, can't be about no, the millennials. No. Grown folk need stuff to do the, too. Yes, we do. And ain't Sorry, nothing I'm like remembering too, the seventies right. where they actually played instruments. True. Real instruments. And sang for real. Real bands. Yes. Everybody sang their own. Real yes, talent. Yes. yes. And you know. If for the dance and some platforms they ain't easy. Well, no. 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 So per, no, per my mom. But look yeah. forward to us doing that continuously in the future. Good. You know. A little put that little tack. I'm gonna hold put you that, to put that. Put that tack in <laughs> I'm that. gonna have to remind put you the of tack that. In that. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Saturday, okay. November 9th. Ugh. 14 hour action cinema megathon. Right. Started off at 10 a.m. Obviously, the official selection screenings. Right. But we had a plethora. Plethora, yeah. Of anniversary films. Yes, indeed. There was something Let's, for everybody. Something for every everybody, generation. Everybody. Listen, my, my son was there, my nephew was there. Um, when I tell you there, everybody, there was something for everybody, and mainly because of this young lady right here. So let's start first <laughs> with um, it was the 45th anniversary of Black Belt Jones. Right. Okay. okay. Obviously, starring Jim Kelly, um, but it was the 40th anniversary of Warriors. Oh. The Warriors, classic. Brooklyn, Coney Island, oh. in the house. And this young lady right here showed up, showed off, <laughs> and showed out so that everybody could be a part of that celebration. This young lady, Miss Beautiful Diz, I'm telling you, if you ask her, she can do it. We had this virtual reality booth 
that did videos, photos, okay, gifts. Um, those are the three options, right? Mm -hmm. Video, photo, and gift. I don't know how she did it, but you were immersed in the Warriors. Somehow, you were a part of the Warriors, and I'm going to let her explain. I ain't going to have a giveaway, no secrets, <laughs> but she can talk a little bit about the technical aspect, because I didn't understand nothing the man was asking me. <laughs> And, okay. Crystal, and, and, and beautiful day was like, oh, oh, that's all. You, oh, no, I understand. No, I, got I, got I got it. Go ahead. Oh, uh, well, Demetrius hits me up asking me uh, to see if I you gave me an example. I forgot what the example was you gave me. Um, oh, it was um, Rihanna in that car for that movie or something. Yes. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. And he asked me to put together this booth, and I'm like, okay, well. I'll do a little research on it and try to figure it out because I, I use After Effects and a couple other programs and things like that. And um, ended up just kind of doing research on each thing and using my imagination and, and making it. Uh, to me, it was, pretty, it was pretty simple. I mean, I use, I use After Effects all the time. <laughs> oh, it's like, what's the gymnast's name that, that's the most Simone decorated? Simone Biles? Yeah, it's like, okay. oh, do a triple... I know, I know. <laughs> to me, it's very simple. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is, That's a huge compliment. You're the most decorated gymnast in the world. In your career path, in your industry, that, yes. that's insane. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's cool. quite simple. Well, it was a lot of fun doing the projects. Um, I had a, a great time doing them. I love researching it and, and um, putting it together. We had the Furies in the house. Oh, they were off the hook. They came in live. And Listen. to see them in that cosplay, it, well, obviously there was cosplay, but to see them in that, that experience was mm -hmm. like, wow, this is really cool. But what was great about it, whether you were in cosplay or you were just there, you were still part of the experience. Exactly. And that's what was cool about it. Mm -hmm. The next one she did, was for the mate no no i'm i'm a, i'm not going to do the matrix yet the last dragon 35th anniversary celebration obviously tamak the last dragon was there and she created this amazing experience where you got show enough over here <laughs> and you got bruce leroy over here uh -huh. up up here you had eddie arcadia with with um with well, she wasn't Vanity at that time. She was Laura Charles. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I think Lil Richie was in it, too. Did you have Lil Richie in it? <laughs> Did I? I don't know. Yeah, I think he was. I yeah. think he was. I think he was. It was the coolest thing. And what she did was it was branded. That was what's important yeah. to me as a platform. Okay. It was branded in such a subtle way. I put logos on it everything. Was just, it was just part of the, the you know, the, <laughs> mm -hmm. the overall decor. Um, it was part of the landscape, mm -hmm. right? if you will. And it was, it was incredible. Now, we had these cosplayers that dressed up, was a female cosplayer, that dressed up as sure enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw her. And then we had, <laughs> like, we had amazing. broadly sure enough. Like, <laughs> Anybody ever watch Dragon Ball Z? They know Brawly is like. We had a show enough that was like. Jack. Was he the guy that was six something or whatever? Yeah. He was like six <laughs> six or whatever. Yes. He was huge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was big. But to see her in the VR experience was really really cool, very very cool, because you know these cosplayers are so so creative, mm -hmm. as you know as as designers as you know. It, that was incredible. Now, the Matrix 20th anniversary. Let's talk about that mm. because I'm gonna, I'm about to show y'all something. Let's talk about the Matrix. Um, well, film-wise, actually, the Matrix was probably the easiest one for me to do. You know, I had to do the iconic scene, Lord of course. Have mercy. She talking about. Do y'all remember in the Matrix? where the bullets was coming at them and they was oh, going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. She's saying that okay. was the easiest one to do. Oh, God. Because it was, was it was the most, uh, you know, like as far as decisions, which part of the film I wanted to kind of go with, 
you have to do that for the Matrix. Okay. You have to. Yeah, that's okay. true. So that was pretty much an easy decision. I wasn't torn between doing A, B, C, and D. Okay, she's talking about the decision was yeah, easy. the decision was easy. Not the execution. <laughs> so, you had the reign, obviously, the reign of the... Digital reign. Digital reign. Mm -hmm. But then, you had these bullets coming at you that you can dodge. Now, what was so cool about this was this. One of our special guests this year was none other than Thunder. I saw from it. From Black Lightning. I saw it. AKA Blackbird, Thunder, Nafisa Williams. Nafisa got in the Matrix with this little girl yep. that was dressed <laughs> like Thunder. Yeah. And they were Aww. doing the Matrix together. That it was, was so the cute. most adorable little thing in the so world. It was so adorable. And it was, it, 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 it was a testament to why I do what I do. Our purpose is to bring awareness and access to heroes of color, mm -hmm. preserving cultural sustainability through action cinema. So this little girl you better at age than I. How old do you think that little girl was? I want to say six or seven. Yeah. Six or seven. Yeah. Dressed to the T like thunder. She this was. What, this wasn't Dwayne Reed Walmart thunder. No. Because you know they ain't making us one anyway. Hold no. On. No. Somebody got uh, made a pattern, paused that wow. bad boy, looked at many pictures like you did when you debuted um, the, the Dora Milaje for uh -huh. Black Panther. And she was perfect. Had the hair, everything. I, I know exactly which episode she was from. Perfect. So having her with her actual idol enjoying a film that changed the face of cinema, that green screen mm -hmm. technology right. is what changed cinema period. So you got them doing that, and that's not it. Then you have Ying Ying, a.k.a. Wu Assassins, the warrior monk, Celia Ao, with the same girl doing The Matrix. Oh, <laughs> but that shows so you how impact. everyone loves The, the Matrix. Matrix. Everyone is everyone, just, yeah. it's just incredible. So that was another incredible experience. Then let's talk about Black Dynamite. Oh, I had the most fun with that one. The, talk about the Black Dynamite experience. <laughs> well, Black Dynamite, at first I didn't know which direction I kind of wanted to go with with that. Um, then I decided to kind of do a mix of just everything. And explosions and, and helicopters, and I wanted the car in there, and I wanted to have, of course, him, mm -hmm. Michael Jopp in there. And, and um, yeah, and I just kind of threw it all together and, and, and sorted it out, kind of worked out. Incredible. <laughs> you guys could see these... Um, as we're talking about them, but um, we're gonna put a link so you guys could see all the different ones, but they, they, they're amazing. Um, then the next one we did was Star Wars uh, Episode One, The Phantom Minutes, mm -hmm. 20th anniversary, and we had a lightsaber, <laughs> which I got from this young lady over here. Okay. Because I saw her lightsaber, so then she told me where to get one. So, and that was a cool lightsaber too. Yeah, I love that lightsaber. You can, you, you, you <laughs> it can was do, a good it one, huh? become different, like you can, it, different colors, mm -hmm. different All sounds. All different colors, it different was, sounds. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. But we also had the Jedi hood. So the guests oh, no. can put on the Jedi robe right. and the lightsaber and go to town. Go to town. Now that's great. an iconic scene from, from that film. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, obviously that's our first Jedi of color, Mace Windu, mm -hmm. right. Mr. Samuel Jackson, uh, finally got on the Jedi Council, because I thought we was extinct after Lando Carizzi. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> hey, we ain't seen nobody since Lando. Wow. So I'm like, you know, that's good. I'm like, oh, we have a Jedi Council now. Yes. I was like, oh, that's good. Okay. okay. That's good. So that was great. And then Ninja Assassin, she had stars. Ninja Assassin. <laughs> She had stars coming out mm -hmm. at you, um, which was incredible. Um, did I, I don't think I left anything out. 
the uh, Warriors. Office. Cinema, I mean, excuse me, Cinemax, um, they're gonna get me. Cinemax, we have a series, like I said, called Warrior. So mm -hmm. they had a, a, a nice um, VR experience for people who wanted to, to be a part of that as well. So mm -hmm. it was just incredible and thanks to her, it was even more incredible because everybody had the opportunity to, to be a part of those anniversaries and immersed in uh, those films. So well, that, was great. that kind of, I mean, goes to the testament of your tagline: "Come be a part of the action." You know, every year, <laughs> <our> <laughs> <Urban> Action <laughs> Showcase. This is this is part of our marketing and our tagline: <laughs> "Come be a part of the action." And that was more true this year than any other year because of Beautiful Diz. So that's true. <laughs> that was amazing. That though. is seriously. That, so. That's true. All right, so before I get into the Action Expo, I want to talk about the cerebral aspect, which are the panels, the seminars. I'm going to jump in real quick about the seminars. Now, we have industry professionals who work in the industry every day come yeah. out and give individuals who are looking to get a, be a part of the action genre a introduction to various things. First thing was called action. Right. Willie DeBam Johnson. Right. Um, world champion martial artist as well as um, he was in WMAC Masters. Um, comes out and he does a what we call martial arts um, entertainment uh, review. So he allows individuals who are martial artists to be seen by different um, directors, action stars, and get a critique and help them develop their skill set. Okay. So that's a, a very important aspect of what we do called call to action. Then, following that, we had uh, something called firearms for film. Everybody right. loves to shoot the guns and this, that, and that, but there is a technique Right. You just, it ain't just, no, the proper way to grip, right. the proper way to right. aim, the proper way to move when you have the weapon, it's the proper right. way to holster the weapon. So, Nikwan Murphy, Hanchi Nikwan Murphy teaches mm -hmm. that. Then uh, we had something called Action Icon Experience. This happens nowhere else, where the action stars actually do a master class. Started off with Don the Dragon Wilson. Taught screen fighting. Okay. Then Michael Jai White taught classic. screen fighting. That's classic. Then Cynthia Rothrock taught. So it's like, like I said, we had all wow. the dragons in the house <laughs> and they didn't just sit there and look cute. No. They actually interacted and gave back to the community sharing their experience. Now let's go right into the panels. Started <laughs> off with Shiro's in Action. Okay. An amazing panel, all female panel with Nafisa Williams, Black Lightning, mm -hmm. Celia Al from Wu Assassins. Right. Uh, we had um, Evelyn O. Vaccaro from John Wick 3. Uh, who else did I have? I had Anita Clay from um, Dolabite Is My Name. Okay. And I had, I think that's, that was, I think that was it. I don't have to double check if I miss anybody. I'm getting old. <laughs> um, but it was an incredible uh, dialogue. Right. Lady Sensei was our moderator. Right. Um, the link for that will be up for you guys to check it out. But I'm telling you, you're going to learn a lot um, from these these panels. Next, we had the Warriors panel, where if you went to see it, the Warriors uh, 40th anniversary screening, the Furies <laughs> were chasing people around the theater <laughs> during the chase scene and the I film. Love them. So we're talking about making things <laughs> interactive. That was interactive. They literally came to the event with switch on. Oh yeah. Like they 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 were on before they even got 
in the building. Yeah, they don't play. And they did not turn it off until no. the last person left. Probably on the streets. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. But they were. I loved it. I abs. And I love that movie. I gotta say, I I own it. I, I found it on DVD in like a Walmart bin for like five dollars a few years ago, and I was like, ah, snatch! I had to get it because you just don't not own the Warriors. It's so amazing. Love it. Oh, next. Cynthia Rothrock was in the she, she was an action panel. Yes, that is true. So that's okay. that's what it was. Yeah. Um, Anita was in uh, behind the action panel. So okay. the, following that was the behind the action panel. Um, we had. Uh, Stephen Copler from John Wick 2 and 3. We had, um, I call her Harlan, but that's not her real name, Tanise Devia Johnson. She's my student, so I call her Harlan. Um, she's from Gotham. Gotham, okay. Uh, Anita, like I said, from my name, uh, Dolomite's my name. And I know I had somebody else but I have to spin it in my head. But once again, incredible dialogue. You guys can watch it on YouTube. Uh, fast forward now to the one that La Chocolate Box moderated, Urban Fist of Legends Fist panel. Of Legends panel. And the reason why it's called Urban Fist of Legends panel is because all of the legends are on the panel. All of them. All I say all of them. All of them. They were there. Yes. So, obviously, Ty Mock and the Last Dragon, uh, Michael Jai White, um, Nafisa Williams. Right. Uh, Fred the Hammer Williamson. Right. Who else do we have? Don the Dragon. Don the Dragon Williams. Uh-huh. Wilson. Wilson. Cynthia Rock. Cynthia Rock. 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 Um, and I think uh, that was it, right? That was it. Okay. Let's talk about that. Ooh. It was a very, very engaging and interesting panel. Um, I had a lot of fun. There were a lot of surprises, and I cannot thank you enough for that experience. I really can't. I mean, to, to moderate a panel, you think, oh, I'm just going to sit up there and look cute and, you know, just let people talk. No, you really kind of have to, you know, work the questions into every single person and with such limited time. But I think that everyone got their point across for the most part. And um, I can't wait for you guys to see it. So Demetrius is going to put up the link, check it out, see how your girl did. But you know what? Again, it was engaging. It was good. It was cool. Informational as well. Oh, so. It's always informational. When you have those many legends mm -hmm. in a room, you're going to mm -hmm. learn something. You learn a lot. Other. Definitely. Now, the next incredible panel we had was martial arts and cinema. Now, that followed the hit documentary now on Netflix as well as uh, Amazon Prime and Amazon. I don't think it's on Prime, but it's definitely on Amazon. Uh, Iron Fist and Kung Fu Kicks. Okay. Bobby Samuels. Warrington Hudlin. Oof. Michael Jai White. Wow. Cynthia Rothrock. Don the Dragon Wilson. David Worth, which was the director of Kickboxer. Oof. Okay. Um, who else? The original? The Kick, original. The original kickboxer. Okay. Yep. Rick Myers, which is a, uh, you can say he's a martial arts film historian. Um, when I tell you that was a bastion of information and star power. It was moderated by Grady Hendrix, which was the writer of that documentary, okay. Iron Fist and Kung Fu Kicks. Check it out on Netflix if you haven't already, or go ahead and purchase it on Amazon. But it's very informative, and you, it will not disappoint you. That's for sure. The Last Dragon 35th Anniversary panel. Wow. Um, 35 years of, of what I call a pivotal film because it bridged the gap between modern day action hero and black exploitation. If you know your history, the last black, what was labeled black exploitation film was One Down, Two to Go, 1984. Fred Williamson, Jim Brown, J. 
Jim Kelly, Richard Roundtree, which was the sequel of Three the Hard Way. Okay. 1985, Barry Gordy, Motown meets martial arts, The Last Dragon, Time Out became the first hero that was not African American hero that was not part of that black exploitation genre. So mm -hmm. for many people, and I can tell you from experience, for many people, he was the first superhero that they ever saw, the first hero their parents ever took them to see. That film, The Last Dragon, is, a, is part of the fabric of the African American and actually many communities, but specifically those of color because it was the first time they had a hero that was outside of that box that we grew up in. True. So, for sure, I heard it firsthand from Luke Cage himself, Mike Coulter. I had brought Time Act to meet him. He said that was the first film his mother took him to see as a kid. And that is the consensus of a lot of people. It a is. lot of people that have their start today, even Michael John White will say that this man, this film inspired me to do what I've done. It, so, not to interrupt you, but it didn't just inspire, you know, future action stars. It actually made uh, an entire generation of young people who were not previously action stars or martial arts enthusiasts, they went to see it as well. So and, it broke barriers in the entertainment field. And to your point, wanted to study martial arts. Now, I'm older. I don't mind saying it. I'm 50 years old. I'm half, I, I was jumping on the bed watching Bruce Lee. <laughs> That's how I got into martial arts. I jumped on the bed. I was, you know, back in the day, we used to jump on the bed. That was the thing right. we did as kids. Right. So I'm jumping on my father's bed. And I see Bruce Lee on TV, doing everything he's doing. And I say, oh, tell my dad, I want to do that. I had no idea what that was, but I knew I wanted to do that. So it inspired me to become the martial artist that I am today and to want to do what they did. It's just film will influence vis visuals, any type of visuals, you know, be it photographs or whatever, they influence. And this, this, I don't know what you want to call it. It was just like seeing a superhero, basically. Right. Because if you think about it, those, those Kung Fu films were the first superheroes that we had in the sense. They were flying through the air, kicking That's people true. were flying when they kicked. That's you know true. what I'm saying? If you think about it, yeah. you know, all the attributes these superheroes have that's old school kung fu movies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that, you know, was important, that panel to, to celebrate the 35th anniversary. We had the writer, Louis Venostra, there. Yes. Um, we obviously had Ty Mock there. Um, the guy who jumped up in the movie theater and broke the radio, <laughs> Roy C. Jones. I remember. Okay. I remember he that scene. He was there. Um, Leah, Leah Chang was there. And it, it was great. It was a great panel. And, and that was our nighttime entertainment, that film. And then um, we had the show enough running through with his gang bothering wow. the people during the movie. He was that was cool. It was cool. It they was had cool. fortune cookies that had sayings of the movie when they opened it. So it was, it was a cool experience. Um, so I feel like, you know, between the panels and the seminars, people really got the educational aspects that we offer the platform. Our platform is about information, education, facilitation, and exposure. Now let's talk a little bit more about the exposure. We talked about the screenings, right? Right. We talked about, obviously, the, the official selection screenings. We talked about the anniversary screenings. Now let's talk about the expo. Within the expo, we have animators like this quiet one over here. Don't want to tell you, she, <laughs> she does animation. Okay. Comic books. In fact, she's going to tell you about her new comic books that's about to come out. Awesome. Comic book creators, uh, comic book artists, graphic novelists, graphic artists, um, 
everything to do with the genre, whether it be 2D or 3D of action, pop culture, they were there. Uh, we had uh, video games mm -hmm. that people wanted to play that represented the different films. Okay. So they had the opportunity to do that. Um, but we had what we call cosplay guests. And Miss Beautiful Dis was one of our cosplay guests. Uh, she was, you tell her who you were at that time and at that time, because they be switching it up. <laughs> it's, they be switching so it up. You're not a true cosplayer if you don't switch it up at least well. once in, at least once in any given <laughs> event. I mean, well, you know, there you go. She's going to tell you who she was. Oh, this year I, I went for Domino. I had my, my big fro. <laughs> and everyone loves that Domino. Loves the Domino. People were crowded around her, her table. Um, she had this giant um, pull-up banner. And they were like, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's her. Yeah, so that was cool. Um, talk a little bit about the cosplay. Because the, they came out. They came out. They did. Full effect. There's a lot of uh, interesting cosplays. People did awesome jobs. Um, you mentioned one of my favorite, the female show enough. I loved her cosplay. Awesome, awesome work. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Urban Action is a great event. Um, this is my second second year going. Second year going. Oh, I feel like you've been here all my I know, life. I feel like I've been part of the family for so long, too. <laughs> I guess it is the second year. Yeah, my, oh my second gosh, year. Second year. Okay, so last year you did an amazing female blade. Yes, I did the lead, yes, last That's year. That's right. <laughs> you know, I didn't remember that one. I have pictures of you on my phone, girl. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah true. <laughs> Seriously, it was yeah. amazing. It was yeah. awesome. But awesome, awesome. the thing is, she was working that sword. All courtesy to you, by the way. Did, she, did you make that sword? No, the, the sword okay. I had, the, no, I didn't make that one. Okay. No, 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 no. All courtesy okay. to you, of course, because Demetrius uh, well. is teaching. Well, yeah. been teaching me. She's one of my students. Been one of his students for the last two years. I wish I could learn what she had to teach, cause I don't, I can't all that <laughs> editing. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, what? How do you, huh? I'm like, okay, you go ahead, do you? <laughs> Obviously, listen. I'm not a good student, but well, I know you're also how to teacher. listen. I know how to leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Sometimes, G Wally, you gotta, you, listen, you gotta, I know how to leave it to Beaver. You do. I'm like, oh, well, go ahead, girl. You do that. Thank you. <laughs> you do. I know. I say thank you. But um, so, but yeah. So we had some of the warrior. Obviously, there were other warrior cosplays. Mm -hmm. Um, I could have sworn I saw Street Fighter cosplay. I didn't catch that one. The dude with the karate uniform, and I seen enough. I seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the warrior. Uh, I saw a blade. I saw yes, Blade yes, cosplay. Oh, yeah. A yes, couple yes, of Blade, yes. cosplays. Couple of Blade cosplayers. Yep. Um, what else did we have? Uh. Are you talking about? How could you possibly forget Thunder? Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my goodness. Gosh. They came <laughs> I'm in. I'm waiting for you to say it. Full effect. <laughs> they were like, they boom. came <laughs> in. Okay. Full. Yes. When they I did. tell you, yep. I'm going to show it to y'all. Mm -hmm. They came in full effect. And and the lightning came out of his hands. So I'm going to say, boom. I yes, was like, it did. Okay. Yeah. okay. I ran right over to him and started asking him as a cosplayer, okay. how'd you make this? How'd you okay. make this? <laughs> I'm no. taking my notes. Ramos <laughs> is his name. They were amazing. Raymond Ramos is his name. I'm going to put their information on the screen when you guys look at the, the photo. But I'm telling you, incredible artist. They did a great job. And they, they made it from scratch. He mm -hmm. made it and he performed it. Oh, we had Nick Fury. Fred Who Holt was Nick one? Fury. Yeah. Okay, okay. He was Nick Fury. He was there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that because it was incredible. I, we did mention the little girl that was. You mentioned the little girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but and those, that was cute. But, 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 but yeah. But those yeah. two. Were, were... And and the good and the great. Oh no, we had the original Black um, Lightning too. Yeah, cosplay Bill was the original Black Lightning. Okay. He had on the, the with the white mask with the afro mm -hmm. with the oh, v, that was the original okay. black lightning from the comics. Okay, didn't realize yeah. that. And I got pictures of all of them together, and I got them pictures with obviously Thunder at her booth. Yes, yes. It's it was epic. I can't front. It was <laughs> off the chains. It was off the chains. It was. Now see, you'd be remiss if you did not mention that bananas interview that I had with Nafisa. 
That's true. We, we got to touch true. on that. We, we, Nafisa we, is so down to earth. She was prepared for questions I didn't even get a chance to ask. Girlfriend was on point. Oh, she don't play. She was eloquent. She was professional. She was a sister that she was kind of like, you know, around the way girl, but at the same time about her business. I loved her. I, I She's beautiful in person, by the way. I'm talking gorgeous, but I, she was amazing. She's, She's a amazing. fashionista. She has her own fashion line. Check her uh -huh. out on Instagram. She ain't playing like this one right here. She ain't playing. Not playing. But, of course, we're going to put the um, link up for you guys to watch the full interview. And you'll, you'll, you're so definitely going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot from that. So we're going to give you guys a, an opportunity to see a, a short little uh, recap of UASD 2019. And then we're going to come back and give you a few secrets about next year. Yeah, I can't tell nobody. All right. So we'll be right back with more Behind the Action. to Behind the Action, and I hope you enjoyed that little, you know, review of UASC 2019, and it inspired you to want to uh, be a part of 2020. And before I spill the tea, yeah, a little bit of tea, I ain't spilling okay. too much tea for <laughs> 2020, I want to talk to beautiful Diz and let her tell you about some of the things coming up and how to follow her on social media and so forth. All right, well... Basically, right now, I'm working on a comic book. Um, I'm hoping to get accomplished in 2020. Uh, it's written by me, and the characters are all illustrated by me. It's been something I've been trying to do for the last uh, maybe 10 years, and I've been putting on the, the side, and finally this year, I want to get it done and out there. Um, hopefully, you guys will check it out. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. My name is Beautiful Diz, D-I-Z. <laughs> Miss La Chocolate Box. Ew. She's that, I don't know how many plays she did this year. <laughs> how many fashion uh, covers she has this year, but g give us a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Um, I'm a stylist, fashion designer, spoken word artist, host, actress, a few other things, and writer. Um, I do have, I'm currently co-writing uh, a couple of film shorts that are all fashion-based. I'll be hosting an event in Vegas in September. Oh, you see they wait to the show to I be know, springing it on people and, like that. And I, I've been uh, working on a lot of fashion projects, like more um, designing and, you know, with different photo shoots and stuff like that to kind of get my work out there. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can. It's interesting once in a while. It's La Chocolate Box. That's L-A Chocolate Box. Um, that's, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and that's it. Hit me up. Let me know if you like some of the stuff that I got going on. But yeah, it's going to be next year is going to be interesting. A lot of projects going on right now. Well, there's only one thing I want you to check out. Now, in honor of the Matrix 20th anniversary, my student Vanessa Bontea and I, with, of course, beautiful Diz's help, <laughs> did a fan film. Ooh. 
of That's the right. Animatrix. Yep. Nobody's never done that before. We're the only Animatrix fan film. It's called Rise of the Osiris, which is basically a um, homage to um, one of the specific uh, Animatrix uh, films where you had this African-American male um, flirtatiously sparring with this Asian female. And then they go on this mission and so forth. So check it out. The link is on uh, YouTube. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to throw some stuff out. Now, these are my ambitions. I'm not saying it's set in stone. Okay. But it's the 45th anniversary of Friday Foster and Sheba Baby. Mm. Can we say Pam Grier? Ooh. Ooh. Don't get too excited. Don't, I, I ain't, I'm just saying. I'm throwing it out there. I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> 20th anniversary of Romeo Must Die. Okay. Unleashed. Can I say? Jet Li. Ooh. What? Oh. Uh, 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 <laughs> Bad Boys 25th. Y'all make sure y'all go see Bad Boys next year in theater. Bad Boys 3. But the 25th anniversary of the original Bad Boys. Okay. Um, Electra. 15th anniversary. Um... Expendables, 10th anniversary. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, <gasps> Ooh. 20th anniversary. Ooh. That's all oh. I'm going to say. Oh. That's all That's I'm going to say. Time. So I want to thank my lovely guest, Beautiful Diz, La Chocolate Box. Thank you for having and me. And we have taken you behind the action of UASC 2019. So until next time, stay cool, be cool, don't be a fool. We'll see you again on Behind the Action.